so back to magnetostatics, um, basically I'm going to do um, one more example. So more examples of magnetostatics. And now let's talk about the magnetic field of a coax cable. So magnetic field. of coaxial cable. So if you remember, this is one of our examples of um, a transmission line. It's a coax cable, coaxial cable, um, like you have coming to your home in terms of a cable or BNC cable that you have in the lab. And so if you remember, when we were doing the transmission line equations, we were just being told what the inductance per unit length was. So we're going to basically first figure out the magnetic field in a coax cable, and then we're going to use that to get the inductance of a coax cable. But let's start with the magnetic field. So assume that there is a DC current going through the coax cable. So uh, imagine if we had, let's see, what does a coax cable looks like? It looks like you have an inner core. And let's say the diameter of that inner, or sorry, the radius of that inner core is A. And then you have an outer conductor it's kind of this, you can think of it as a shield or you're just bringing current back. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to draw it like this. The outer, outer conductor. So like that and both of these are going. And then you have a, this inner, the the beginning of the the outer conductor's shield is at point b radius b and the outer limit is at radius c so let's say that's away from the center of this conductor so this thickness is c minus b and there's a current going out in the inner conductor and so because there has to be a closed current loop, there's a current going out this way and it has to come back. So that's our situation. So if I look at, I'll try to also draw, looking at the cross section of this, we have this inner conductor that's got a radius of A. And then there's an outer conductor. That didn't work. that didn't work either Let's see how do I do this let me try it this way so center this guy I need to draw a bigger just a little bigger circle and then put that guy here okay Oh, that's not very symmetric. Um, somewhat symmetric. Okay, I'm trying to make it somewhat symmetric. Okay. And so then you have B and C. And then um, oops. C. And then there is a current of I going, you know, I could whatever way you like it it's either coming out of the screen or going back into the screen but then the outer conductor which is its thickness is b minus c that's carrying a current of minus i so that's basically the situation okay so let's we would need to figure out the 
sort of the magnetic field for everywhere around here. So we basically have to break it down into three areas. Basically, um, the magnetic field inside this inner conductor, um, the magnetic field in between the inner conductor and the outer conductor, and the magnetic field inside the outer conductor and the magnetic field everywhere else. So let's look at each of one of those in turn. So for uh, R is less than A, which means anywhere inside here. Okay, so the, if you look at the, if you have a current of I going here, the first thing we would need to do is to figure out the current density. Okay, so the current density inside here j is the current i over pi a over pi a squared I pi a squared is the the area of the cross section of this thing pi a squared and so the current density is the current divided by that area okay so let's say we have this region so the overall region is a and then we want to figure out the magnetic field associated with a smaller radius r inside this inside the inner core and so let's we say we call this surface s1 so the current at through s1 is the current density times pi r squared. So that's equal to taking it from here ends up being i pi r squared over pi a squared. So from the previous um, um, sort of example of Ampere's law, we know that the magnetic field is in the direction of phi times 2 pi r and that's equal to all the enclosed current, which is I, um, I R squared over A squared. And H of phi is equal to um, I R over two pi A squared and b of phi is mu naught h of phi, so that's mu naught i r over two pi a squared. So what that looks like if I draw that, so if I draw r and I draw the magnitude of the magnetic field, that ends up looking like it's basically a linear function of r so it's just gonna go all the way till i hit a it's gonna go up linearly till it gets to a magnitude of mu naught i over 2 pi a okay so magnetic field it's going to start at the center of the core at zero and then as it goes as it goes away from it all the way to the edge of the core so away from it all the way to the edge of the core then it's just going to go linearly up with a maximum value so when r is equal to a is the maximum value and that'll be mu naught i over 2 pi a okay so that's inside the core so now we look at the case where we're looking at between the inner conductor and the outer conductor. So R is between A and B. So in that case, I enclosed, you can say that's the surface S2, anywhere in that surface in between, the, the cylinder would enclose, the surface would enclose the entire current here. So it would just be I, there's no other current in between so it would just be this current i so you would end up oops you would end up with um, 
h phi 2 pi r is equal to i and h phi is i over 2 pi r and b phi is mu naught i over 2 pi r. So in this case, what happens is uh, the magnetic field is going down linearly with R. So if I was going to add that to this graph, let me move this, copy this graph down. So now, let's just say this is R, let's say this is B. So what happens is now the magnetic field is going to go linearly down and it's going to get a minimum value at B of mu naught I over 2 pi B. All right, so let's see, and so now let's look at R being between B and C, and so if I draw it, let's see, well, let me just copy it over here. So basically, we're looking at, it's a good color here, maybe blue. So we're like looking at this case of R being here in between. So the R is like sitting here inside this outer conductor, anywhere along those. So anywhere in there, the current density is... Uh, sorry, sorry, in the outer shell, the current density is J in outer shell. The current density is minus I because it's going in the opposite direction to I. Pi squared, C squared minus B squared because the area, cross-sectional area at any point is pi R squared minus B squared. Because of that, the enclosed, the total enclosed current at any point R is minus I R squared minus B squared over C squared minus B squared. And that is subtracted from I because there's also this total current here. So basically you end up with this current minus whatever amount of current this, you're enclosing in this outer shell. The reason it's minus is because this outer current is going in the opposite direction of the inner current. So this is equal to two pi r h phi or h phi is i over 2 pi r minus um, i over 2 pi c squared minus b squared r squared minus b squared over r and so that's that's the equation for a for h and B is mu naught times that. And then you can see that at, for this case, at R is equal to C. So when R gets to this outer, the very outer edge of the shell, then H of phi is equal to zero. So copying this again over, Oops. 
So let's say this is C. You basically get, now I'm not gonna even try to draw this equation, but basically you get, you fall from this point, this, this, this point, when you hit B, you go down by this equation, but you get to zero at the point C. So don't pay any attention to the shape. I don't even know what the shape might look like if you draw that, but it goes to zero at the end, okay? That means that, this means that, so if you look at the magnetic field, it's all enclosed inside the coax. So there's no magnetic field outside. So this means the uh, inner coax the magnetic field is fully enclosed. Okay, so, so that's an example of